Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the tools and supplies that you need to sew your own pair of jeans. I've sewn jeans three or four times now, and they're a lot more complicated than your basic like top or skirt, but the process goes a lot more smoothly if you have the right tools and supplies. Let's get started. So when you're sewing jeans, you're going to want to have some specific thread and needles. First off, you're going to want a jeans or denim needle to sew through this kind of fabric. You're just gonna need something that's a little sturdier and specially made for denim. And for your seams, you can use your regular all-purpose thread, um, you know, just matching probably navy, gray, black, whatever color denim you're using to match. If you're using an overlocker or serger, you'll also need thread for that. So to do this really classic stitching, you'll wanna get a top stitching thread. And I have a few colors here, you know, this kind of classic gold. Um, you could also get red, um, lots of different colors available. So when you go to top stitch, you're going to want to use a top stitching needle. And these are specifically made to accommodate these really thick threads. So you'll install a top stitching needle and then put your top stitching thread through the top of the machine, through the needle, but through the bobbin, you're going to use your regular all-purpose thread. So one of the things that's really annoying about making jeans is switching back and forth between your jeans needle and your different threads. If you are lucky enough to have two machines, I recommend setting up one for your top stitching and one for your seaming. And then you don't have to take as much time going back and forth and setting up your machine between the two. Another option is to just use your regular all-purpose thread for the entire thing. And instead of using the top stitch thread, you'll do a triple straight stitch and that will stitch each stitch three times. So it gives the illusion of a top stitching thread. I like to do this with a thread that really matches pretty well. So it kind of blends in a little bit, but you can still tell that there's top stitching there. It's a more subtle look. Um, it's a little bit easier to handle sometimes if your machine doesn't love the top stitching thread. Um, and then you don't have to go back and forth between different needles. So another special thing about jeans are the hardware. So you're gonna have rivets and jeans buttons and these metal zippers. And all of these pieces of hardware really give you that classic jeans look. So you'll wanna find a zipper that is metal. Um, these are pretty readily available. If they're too long, you can use pliers to remove the teeth. Or most patterns would hopefully give you instructions on how to do that and advise on the length of the zipper. So you'd want a zipper like this. Or if you're not doing a zip fly, you can do buttons all the way down. And so these buttons are metal and they have a hole on one side. And then you have these little posts that are pokey and this pokey one comes up from the bottom and then you hammer this button on top and they really stay on very well. So those are kind of cool. And then you're also going to have rivets and those work in a very similar way. You have the little posts and then these rivets and you hammer those together. So one more thing that's really helpful to have is a glue stick. So I like to use my glue stick to put on my pockets before I stitch them down. It'll just hold it in place. And to put on the belt loops, you can just put a little bit of glue on the wrong side and glue it down before you top stitch. I've never had any problems um, with the glue gumming up my machine. You just use enough to tack it down. It's a loose hold and will wash away later. So another tool that's gonna be really helpful for you is an awl, and this is just a thing that's gonna poke holes. 
So you use this when you are installing your rivets and your jeans button and you just poke a hole through your fabric and then you can put the little post from the button or the rivet through that hole. If you don't have an awl, you can also use a nail and a hammer and just hammer that nail through your fabric and poke the hole. So another thing that's gonna be helpful when you're sewing something like your pockets or um, anywhere where you're going from like a single layer of fabric to three or four layers of fabric is called a hump jumper. And the hump jumper just levels out the layers of fabric. So I don't actually have one. I'll try to put a picture in somewhere of a hump jumper. It's a little piece of plastic that goes behind your presser foot. But I just use a piece of scrap fabric and I fold it up until it's the number of layers that I need to make the fabric level. So if I'm gonna start stitching here, I will just put this little scrap of fabric behind here and then my presser foot can sit flat right on top of the fabric and stitch right through. So you're not gonna stitch on this fabric or the hump jumper. Um, you'll just stitch right through here and it'll keep it level and make sure that your needle just goes through more evenly. So another useful tool is a set of pliers and this is a pretty um, weak <laughs> pliers. Um, these are for making jewelry, but you can really use normal hardware pliers. I just lost mine. So one way to use it is when you want to shorten your zipper. So if your zipper is longer than your fly, you might want to remove some of these metal teeth. And what you do is you hold your fabric and your zipper really firmly. And then with this flat end of your zipper, and I use the part right down here. You grab onto one of these little metal pieces, one of these teeth, and just pull it off. There, it worked. <laughs> I'm always slightly surprised when it works. So you just pull them off until your zipper is the length that you want. The other thing that the pliers are handy for is they usually have a section that cuts can kind of see it right here and you can use that part of the tool to shorten a rivet. Another tool that you might want to have is a clapper and this is just a piece of wood. Seriously, it's a piece of wood and then kind of a handle on the top and you use this when you're ironing and it'll help you get your fabric flatter. When you iron with steam, you can iron it and then you put your clapper down and you just hold the steam in your fabric. So it's kind of like you're ironing longer, but you're not keeping that heat on there. So it's a little bit safer for your fabric. And it's really remarkable how much flatter you can get when you use the clapper and just hold the steam in the fabric for a little bit longer without the extra heat of your iron. So one tool that's kind of surprising for sewing is actually a hammer. And when you're sewing jeans, you're going to get these like really bulky seams and they can be challenging to top stitch. So one way to make them flatter is to hammer it. So what I like to do is put a towel down to protect the fabric a little bit and then you just hammer away at that seam. Ooh, my hammer's a little sticky, oh my gosh. Um, so you just hammer away and this will actually just flatten that fabric out. So the other time that you use a hammer when you're sewing jeans is when you're installing the little rivets and the jeans button. So you'll need your hammer for that. And then I also like to use this mini anvil. You could also use a cast iron pot or something that's just really, really hard but I've had really good luck with this little anvil. It's really changed my jeans making experience. So all you do is you put your hammer down on a sturdy, and you put your anvil down on a sturdy flat surface, and then you'll put your fabric on top, insert your rivet and everything, and just hammer away. 
Well, I hope that that overview was helpful for you. I'll put some links down in the show notes to some of my favorite sources for sewing tools and supplies, and even some links to some of the jeans that I've sewn before. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any requests for future videos. And if you haven't done so already, I would be so honored if you hit the little subscribe button and then the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Happy sewing. Bye.